everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Ziggy Scooby? Ah, and, and awesome brown new reviewer, Silver Quill. Oh, hi, Diamond Tiara. Oh, gosh. Ah, who now we're going to have to visit uh, only on Tuesdays every two months, because he's going to go to prison, <laughs> uh, for doing ah. something to Diamond Tiara that's not what usually the fandom does to her. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh, I regret gosh. nothing. <laughs> You definitely don't, because this is going to be uh, a review of issue number 16 of the Friends Forever uh, series, also known as the unofficial Finship is Magic issue number 6, that's how I like to call it, starring Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, with writing by Jeremy Whitley and art by the newcomer Jen Blake, with uh, colors by Heather Breckel. And, uh, yeah... I am. I even think I am misnomining it by calling it the Finch, the unofficial fin, Finship is Magic issue number six, because this comic centers around the two characters that have been the longest, most consistent villains in the entire show. You know, having Discord, having T-Rex, having all of these terrible fiendish guys like that, Green Chrysalis, Common King Sombra, but no, the ones that remain undefeated and unpunished at least not properly punished, are two little fillies by the name on, by the names of Diamond here and Silver Spoon. So, what do you guys think of this comic? I mean, what, what do you make of a comic focused on these two little fillies? Oh, where to begin? I mean, I've given up on Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. At, at one point, Silver Spoon might have had a redeeming arc. You know, she, Diamond Tiara is the, is the, more conniving, more entitled, and more unpleasant character, and Silver Spoon is a lackey. But then came Flight to the Finish, where Silver Spoon gleefully joined in on calling out Scootaloo on a physical disability or some sort of limitation. And I thought, yeah, there's really no coming back from that. So how how on earth do you do you carry a comic that centers on two characters that you're, are designed to not be liked or perhaps love to hate. I mean, George R. R. Martin is a, is a master of creating characters you love to hate. Easy, you kill them off later on. You kill them off later on after you've killed off of the characters people like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the truth is they did this by introducing a bunch of characters that you do like. Tiara and Spoon are, uh, yeah, that sounds weird. Uh, they're the primary motivators in this. They're the ones pursuing the action, but it's everyone around them who adds this, uh, this comic's charm. I'm afraid by the end, these two are even more charmless than they were before. <laughs> and you realize that if they do have a friendship, it's based on a mutual unpleasantness, which just sounds like a, a, a condemnation in and of itself. How do I go off the debt? Like, Diamond Tiara Silver Spoon are villains in their own right. Like, if you guys remember in season two, there's the villain poster. They're there. They're they are there, there with the rest of the villains, with Aoi Soto, with Discord and Chrysalis and Nightmare Moon. <laughs> with, they are there with all of these fiendish guys. And then there's them. Yeah. But okay, honestly speaking, like schoolyard bullies are evil in their own right. I wouldn't say that they're pure evil. Probably when they grow up, they learn their lesson or karma hits them like a ton of bricks. But hey, when that time comes, it will come. But them having their own comic here, I was interested in seeing where this was going. I was hoping that at least Silver Spoon was the voice of reason while the Tiara was chaos incarnate. But no, we, we got something interesting here. Like, I, I like the visuals here. Like, the book was awesome. Story here, I like it. I, it's hard for me to top what Silver said. And I, I like it. I, I like it. Uh, what are you, James? Ah, uh, this is... This comic is weird. <laughs> because this is like... Uh, this is like playing a video game from the perspective of Bowser. Like, this has the same... Like what what Silver said is absolutely right. Is is like it has the charm from all the characters around these two, but these two are so conniving, manipulative, unpleasant, and downright like tiny evil. evil. They are like 
they are like two little plunder seeds of evil just floundering around and just being just that, that, oh, but yeah, I mean, this, this is an interesting comic because it does something that no other comic does. And that's why I like to call it the, the unofficial Finship is Magic, uh, issue number six. It's because it does take the perspective of two characters that from the get go are not very friendly, not even to each other. Because what they have, it's more like an animosity. They have kind of like a, and how will you call it? It's more like a passive aggressive friendship than a real friendship. It's like they, they don't really love each other. They just tolerate each other because they know they can get something out of their acquaintance. I do like the idea and I like the execution, but yeah, I mean, God, maybe in the past I would have liked Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, but right now, Right now, no, Silver, let me help you. I know where to dump the body. Oh, no, no, don't <laughs> get me involved. Don't get me involved. I don't want to go to jail because of you guys. No, shut up. You only get to jail if you get caught. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's like, they, they, this comic did give us a perspective on these two characters. Maybe it wasn't the most positive one. But then again, they are playing it to the non-redeeming character. They are the Joffrey of the My Little Pony world. <laughs> They're making reference to, to the... <laughs> to Game of Thrones. It's like, they are the Joffrey. They are two little Joffreys. <laughs> uh, uh, hopefully with not so much power, but oh boy. Oh uh, wow. But yes, so, uh, from now on we're gonna be discussing the, the entire comic. Spoilers from now on. So if you haven't read the comic, uh, stop now, go read it, and then come back. So how shall we tackle this one? Shall we tackle it with themes or with, uh, scenes? I don't know, because the scenes are good here, but the teams are even better. Like, I, I don't know. What do you think, Silver? Hmm. This one, I feel like we can talk talk about it more by se- by scenes. Uh, it's a pretty st- straightforward flow of events. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of themes in, other than Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are, are miserable. <laughs> oh, true that. All right. I, I think scenes is good then. Scenes then. Let's go with scenes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we start with Diamond Tiara talking about how awesome her father is and how <laughs> how the Ponyville is full of losers and chumps and they, they are not worth it. And uh, she's making a class presentation. And, of course, Cheerly is less than thrilled about it. Well, that's because she's, like, ca- she's eager to get to her lesson on the Littles Pet Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Which I didn't catch at first because I'm not, I, I, I haven't watched Little Spad Show, but yeah, that's the, whose skunk is that? That's Pepper you know. Clark. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. I, I, I need to bring up something like before we continue on. This wow. comic book is awesome in terms of all the reference that it puts. Like, ah, when we reach the page, I'll just say it, but oh god, this, mm, good. So good. But, uh, th- there is also one other villain in Ponyville that's on the first page who never gets his comeuppance properly. Oh. And that's Angel head. Bunny. That's oh. Angel Bunny. Now, thankfully, <laughs> Spike, is, Spike is trying to deliver justice unto the little wretch, but, uh, <laughs> he'll probably escape unpunished again. <laughs> oh well. By the way, Phil is shaking their flanks together. Yeah. Hey, God, come on. It. It's not the first God, time. Hey, if it works for Lyra and Sweetie Drops, it can work for others. Yeah, we did, uh, did it first. It totally does. <laughs> but yeah, Chili is not very happy with how uh, Diamond Tiara is talking about uh, the town. And uh, the CMCs are not all that thrill either. <laughs> but she's uh, Chili is, is quick enough on her hoops to move on to the next subject. And she does talk about the Junior Scavenger Hunt that happens in Ponyville, right? Mm-hmm. During that class presentation. I haven't read this comic in a while. It's showing now. She, she says how they have to form teams and all that. Diamond, Tiara, and Silverspoon, they need another pony to be part of their team because they are teams of three, right? Yep, yep. It's a three-pony team, like Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we get too much further, this the scene right after Cheerilee's given her speech really sums up the reason I'm not a big Diamond Tiara fan. Oh, yeah. Because there, there are characters who, you know, you love to hate. Joffrey, Mal, uh, Draco Malfoy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count Joffrey as a character I love to hate. He's just a character I love to kill. <laughs> oh, oh, Draco, there you Malfoy go. Had, the, Draco Malfoy had some likability going for him. And, and it's, that's per, perhaps this comic where 
uh, throws diamond here and silver spoon in the meat grinder. Oh, <laughs> yeah. they, it's, it's, these are characters I want to kill now. <laughs> <laughs> but the right off, right off the bat, Diamond Tiara is totally uninterested. She doesn't want the uh, Blue Hay music tickets. She doesn't care about the town history or a scavenger hunt. It isn't until she knows the Crusaders are having or are looking forward to it that she wants to ruin it for them. That's her character in a nutshell. How can I make the Crusaders unhappy? Yeah. There's no, How can I make no, this miserable? Yeah, there's no, there's no personal motive. The one time Diamond Tiara has had some really excellent characterization was Ponyville Confidential. When she had a goal of make, she wanted to make the newspaper something big mm-hmm. and she was willing to do anything to get it. Mm-hmm. That's okay. her pursuing her own goal and that makes her so much more interesting. True that. Yeah, it, true be- that. it became network with Phyllis. It was a very good episode. Uh, you know what? I would even say that Princess Twilight Sparkle has, uh, uh, no, Some Twilight Time. Twi- yeah. No, Twilight Time. Twilight Time did had a, a perspective of Diamond Tiara that I wasn't, that I wasn't expecting to see. It's like the whole, oh, why died, like, innocent kind of like, oh, Princess Twilight, ah! And I was like, wow, I have never seen Diamond Tiara this happy without making someone else miserable ever. <laughs> I have never seen her doing something like that before. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the first time, but Diamond Tiara, like, you mentioned Silver, in this comic, like, she was not interested at all. Yeah, okay. I do understand that. Like, she's not interested into country music or whatever it is that the price is giving away. But just to join and, just to join in spite, that is just, how do you put this? Something you would love to see a character that you'd love to hate do? Because hey, you're playing to my trope and I like it. That's Diamond Tiara in a nutshell, but when you know, when you've nailed down her character on page three, four, mm-hmm. let's see here. When, two, three, three pages in, and her character's already there, and there's not going to be any further development, it's like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do for the rest of the story? It's really interesting, really. Show, show, show her, no, actually show her how she is, she is such a manipulative I don't want to swear, but she's such no, a manipulative... No, 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 give me what ah, work. Okay. She is, uh, she, she just, this is something that I really wanted to see. Something within her home life. Like how she interacts with her father. And she lies. She is such a lying cow. <laughs> is that, yeah, that, those, those cutie mark crusaders, they are the bullies in the school, and of course the father believes her because, but, oh, I will, I, I, I'm a business horse and I don't have time to meddle with school issues. If these are being bullies, I don't, I'm not gonna check with the, with the school, uh, with the school teacher. We could just sum it up. She's a manipulative lying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but one thing we see, uh, Penny Ling and Michelangelo, yay. Oh yes, the pop oh, yes. culture is strong with this one. I know. Also, if you read in the book, it says how to trick your dad. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was that's, it that's what it says on the book, how to trick your dad. Oh wow. But no, I mean, okay, besides that, the character for Filthy here is he, he cares for his daughter and he wants the best. Unfortunately for him, his daughter is just like a naiving <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a conniving mean blowhorn. Honestly speaking, like Filthy and the Apples, they're, they have an understanding where they are good to each other. Like, the Apples provide Apple jams and he sells them. Oh, we're gonna talk about that when we got to the days of Ponyville, uh, oh, uh arc. oh, we're gonna talk oh, about that. God. I have that so many we, problems with those when comics. We reached that one. We, oof. anyway. Next page. Yeah, we're talking about this one. So we see that uh Filthy is going to do something to help his his little girl because it's, of course she's that is she's that is little girl, why not? Mm-hmm. And they arrive to the setup of the scavenger hunt. And uh, Pop they culture are reference to, They are trying to give Andy Price a run for his money when it comes to pop culture <laughs> references on this panel alone now, aren't they? Yes. Because yes. okay, so far I see the three stooges. Sailor Moon mm-hmm. and the Powerpuff Girls. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the other group of ponies is, though. That's Archie, Betty, and Veronica. <laughs> ah, from the Archie comic. <laughs> there you go. That's why I didn't catch it. I don't. I don't read Archie. Oh, also, yeah. 
Sailor Mercury is best po- best unicorn. <laughs> but fun fact, did you guys know that Archie comics rebooted? Mm, wouldn't doubt it. Every every other comic has. They've yeah. already they already shot poor Archie. And it, ah. Oh yeah, he, if I remember mistaken, he's dead. Well, in one ver- in one continuity. Yeah. Oh, but you do know that uh, Punisher went to their world, right? Yeah, he didn't shoot Archie. No, no, but uh, that's just something to. Mm. Uh, Punisher goes to going back Archie. to the comic and uh, <laughs> going back into focus. All right. <laughs> The Kitty Mark Crusaders go to them in town, Silver Spoon, and they're like, Hey, how are you here? You hate scavenger hands, and you only have, like, two ponies on your team. You need three, at least. Uh, cue one of the background ponies opening up a zipper from the inside, oh, and... Wow. <laughs> there you go. That's... Velma. Uh, p- p- horse pun number 27, Prancy Drew. <laughs> 27? Yeah. What have we, where have you been counting from? We're in the hundreds at least. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. this is one of the earliest ones. <laughs> well, okay, 27,000. Yeah, be, before we carry on, like, Gen Lake's art here for the adults, they're good. Like, look at Rainbow Dash, look at Rarity, like, in the previous page, look at Rarity's eyes. Like, they're just, wow. Gen Blake is really doing something here. In the yeah, it is. It's one of those art styles where it does follow on the same style of the show, but it has enough personality to stand on its own. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like the way that she draws the legs. They are very long and they're very like, but they look very solid. These, yeah. these characters do feel really solid on the page. True that, true that. Like, it has presence. Like, you can tell that she's doing her own thing, which is good. I, I hope for more from her. And can I say that Prancy Drew is absolutely adorable? Yep. Velma's I, I don't know what it is with ponies with la- glasses, but she looks so cute. I guess it's worth mentioning Velma herself is meant to be inspired by Nancy Drew. <laughs> She's Nancy Drew, yes. That's why the name is Nancy Drew. It's Nancy Drew. The, the writer, so, the mystery writer, right? Yes, uh, but also why she looks like Velma. It's, it's a, they're doing an homage to two at one, which is major <laughs> props. Double combo. Which is weird. I always thought that the real, that the real investigator on the Scooby-Doo team was, uh, I don't know, Scooby himself, because he stumbled upon the clues by accident. Velma, Velma was the brains, Freddy was the jerk. Yep. Yeah. And, and uh, Daphne was the airhead. <laughs> you, you, Scooby, Shaggy, you go get put in mortal danger and be used as bait for the 57th time. I'll be over here with the ladies. Honestly, the best character on the Scooby Doo, the cartoon was the animation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, we are not talking about the comic. We should be talking about the comic. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to talk about Diamond Terra and Silver Spoon. <laughs> How about we talk about Prancy Drew's disguise and all the people who got uppity over that? Oh. <laughs> Including the real pony. <laughs> well, the the real pony, it, we see her in the background just like, what is that? What is that? Right, he's like, oh my god, what's that too? But because this black-maned pony who seems fond of rarity, uh, she's uh, an OC from the comics. Mm-hmm. She has uh, a same-sex couple cutie mark, it seems. Really? What? Well, not, really? not in not in this. She has no cutie mark in this comic, but she's appeared before with, I believe, two interlocking female gender symbols. Hmm. Where did you see it? Uh, let's see. It was on the IDW forums for this, I believe, where people got so upset. It's like, how do you do this? Won't someone think of the children? Oh, comic so number, the ch- comic number. I need it's, to say this. It's it's always the children. When did we we use children as an excuse these days? Yeah, I, right. I want to hate you, so I'm gonna cite the children. But... I'm gonna use this against you. I'm gonna use the children as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Well, okay. Here's a uh, here is some fan art. I guess I don't know if I'll have to link this image in the comments or some such for all our fan listeners. Just have a little scroll down, and you'll see. The various forms of this here pony, who is apparently quite fond of rarity. I mean, oh everybody's boy. fond of rarity. Oh boy! I mean, very fond of rarity. So, who drew these? Who drew these? Let's see here. This is the OC of one of the comic artists. This guy, kind of, why was you? Why do you have the artist insert her lesbian character not once but twice? Apparently, this is the work of uh, the artist. Gently. Yeah, she drew she drew this herself, yeah. But honestly speaking, I don't mind it. Like whatever it is, like background filler, like background filler, background filler. I don't mind it at all. But uh, I like, honestly, I like it. I like the design of the character. I find mm-hmm. it hilarious. She's very visually appealing. 
I really like but the going visuals. going back into the comics, like for the comic sake, she's an outstanding character. But the reason for her to be outstanding is because, well, it's us to see the reveal where Prince Idru is popping out. That's about it. Other than that, there's nothing. And also the the comedy of where the real mayor and Rarity are both looking at the uh, costume. It looks like, but it looks like an invasion of the body snatchers' husk. <laughs> We're forgetting about the the most adorable thing happening on this pa- on this page, is that Twilight herself goes to Prince Drew to ask her for an autograph. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, and anything for the princess. So, well, that's yeah. I'll roll with that. <laughs> oh well, still still not okay with that. No, actually, I'm okay with this one. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a fan and royalty. That's got to be an ego ego boost. Yeah, uh, it, combo. It's when you say the princess is always right that I start to go. <laughs> 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 yeah. But honestly speaking, on part of the OC in this one, I don't mind it at all. Like, it's not a deal breaker for me. Like, people are raging. I no, it's not me. I don't mind it. I don't mind it either. In fact, I, I encourage the guys to keep bringing that OC in the background and let that cutie mark be seen. Come on. Eh, well, to be, to play it safe, to play it safe, let's not. Because the character itself is already on thin ice. Just to play it safe, just not. I've just pointed out because fans can find drama and something to com- to really get offended about in almost anything. Yeah. And true that. I have no qualms with it and I would have no qualms with her cutie mark being in the comic. They you are running out of things to complain about. You don't like it, then you, you're in the wrong century. For me, to not put it there is just to play it safe because I'm not giving you an excuse. That's my line of reasoning. Uh, anyway, so oh, the wow. mayor, the mayor shows her is going to get to show her usual, uh, leadership chops. The comics have, since the, since the, the Friends Forever with Applejack and the mayor, she's not had a good run, but we start the scavenger hunt. But before that, there was legality to make sure that no rules were broken. <laughs> they have to make sure that uh, all of the that when they reach the end, all of the teams, all of the team members have to be on the steps of the town hall to win the prize. If they are not all of them there, then they don't win. So they are given the first clue, and of course, the CMCs they go and fo- fo- uh, follow their own line of reasoning. While Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon have the support of Prancy Drew, who immediately knows where to go and how to how to solve these riddles. Hexor. Meanwhile the Crusaders get by on just sort of fun luck. Yep. Yeah. Wait, what do you guys think about this whole puzzle solving thing? Because honestly for me, I would like to join in the problem solving for this one. But I like that at least Prancy Drew is not giving them the the uh the answers. Answer, yeah. the, she's not spoon feeding them, yeah, but yeah. The, she's like trying to like, come on, you can, you can do it, you can motivate it. She doesn't know that these are these guys are a lost cause. Yeah, but honestly, I I would like to be part of it. Like, I want to solve the problem too. Like, when they say, what was it? Um, uh, what, what what was the first question? Um, give me a second here. Okay, your first destination. Everyone knows to connect with nature. It's where everyone goes. It's been turned upside down and spun all around. But thanks to its resident, there's no dangerous uh, dragons in town. So that is something cool. I I want to be part of it, trying to solve the problem too. Well, really, all you have to... This takes some planning of the panel arrangement, but if you have that at the end of one page before you have to turn... Uh, then someone can puzzle it over and then turn the page to see if you're right. True that, true that. Because on a side tangent again, I've been reading a book called Ready Player One, and it has the same flow, and I, I love it. So if you guys need a good read, it's get the book Ready Player One. It's good. Uh, continue on to the comic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it's weird. We keep going on tangents, but I think that nobody here wants to talk about this too. I do, I do, I do. I, 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 I do want to talk about Prancy Drew. Like, I have now the feeling she's that in... people know don't want to talk about this too. Well, Prancy Drew is awesome. Like the two others with her, like uh, they're just dead weight. But of course but... they're right. So they get to uh, Fluttershy's cottage where Angel is holding on to the next clue. Uh... <laughs> 
And there apparently that every, yeah, there are so many fanboys of Angel here as well. This is a very hateful comic now, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Or they're uh, giving the they're giving the spotlight to certain individuals. Thank goodness for the Crusaders. Can and you Tracy imagine Turo. if Can you imagine uh, if okay. Diamond Tierra and Silver Spoon join forces with Angel Bunny? Angel Bunny and that cherry seller from putting your hoof down. <laughs> the despicable six. I also see another pet shop character here. It's the bunny in the hole. I forgot the name. But she's there. Yay. Huh. Oh you're right. Yay, another product from Hasbro. Go buy. Okay, <laughs> Oh, if you want references? Look at the next latest gem in the holograms comic. Oh, oh wow! Uh, I heard. Okay, <laughs> honestly, honestly, I heard that the gem in the hologram book was okay. It was not that bad. I'm holding off until I can get a trade. That's about it. Well, I, I'm digressing again, but yeah. So the Crusaders land more by luck than anything, and hey, don't discount luck. Mm, true, true, true. I'm just wondering, like, what the hell did they do? What did they do? They they thought a windmill would be the uh, would be the answer because it spins. Mm-hmm. But the, all that did was catapult them to the correct answer. So the, as the as the man once asked, which is better, being smart or lucky? Um, <laughs> that is a good no cheat. Uh, the best thing is to cheat because that's what Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are doing. They are cheating by bringing someone who is good at solving riddles. Uh, they're cheating. They are- within- they're cheating within the rules. They've obviously played online games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, duh. Silver, you really need to re- uh, ready play a one. Oh, dear. But anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. So they determine, they get another riddle. Now, this one, they solve the answer on the same page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one is rather easy, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, the clues are all there because what was the question again? Like, Things just get sweeter from where you are. This prize winning spot is where you go next. It's a yeah. piece of cake to show you're the best. Yeah, but it's really good, kind of obvious. Come on. But come on. But it does no, set up for probably the funniest images in the comic. Oh, oh yeah. Pinkie mm-hmm. Pie. Yes. Yeah, because as soon as they reach Sugar Cube Corner, there is Pinkie Pie just doing the gondolieri. <laughs> kind of like gondola on a sea of chocolate. Because things kind of like got out of control. That's, yeah, that's strange. But the next page, if you see, she's doing the mermaid pose. She's doing the mermaid pose with like <laughs> clamshells on her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. And then Diamond Tiara decides that cheating within the rules isn't good enough. Now she wants to cheat outside the rules. Uh, that's just despicable. Hi, Diamond Tiara. Good to meet you. The snobbish look she gives after doing the deed, like, oh god. And they are not very inspired when it comes to writing riddles. Don't run too fast, it will give you blisters. Go to the castle that belongs to two sisters. That's not a very good riddle. <laughs> uh, no, it isn't. And of course, as the little villains that they are, they go to the castle of the two sisters. As Diamond, Tiara, and Spoon is... go to the right location. It's like, that is dangerous, you yo. know that you can kill someone if you send them to that castle. Are you kidding? I, I honestly, I, I maintain right? the Everfree Forest just ain't what it used to be. Yeah, true. But I have to say that the panel where Sweetie Belle is holding a help sign, so cute! You realize this is, uh, this is downright Looney Tunes. And plus, it's further proof that Celestia and Luna really need to get out more. Oh yeah, so true. Here's what's puzzling me. Like, they fall down a hole, and they emerge at Sweet Apple Acres? How? I think they went flying again, much like with the windmill. They just got catapulted all the way back, which means, one, these girls drink their milk because their skeletons should be jelly by this point. Oh, yeah, true, yeah, true. Also, yeah. also, uh, physics in this world, like, if you were to need big physics in this world, how can Rainbow Dash even fly with wings that are so tiny? She will need wings that are way bigger than that. Uh, physics, the- they, they, they don't have the sa- they don't work the same on this universe. Well, one pony is made of black matter. And then we hit the true despicableness. As they're, oh, yeah. As oh, they're this pre- kills me. This kills me. Go, go on, go on. But this, oh, God. Well, Prancy Drew trips and falls. It's it's the classic trip of, oh, I hurt my leg. Oh, I mean, okay, here's where I say that Silver Spoon has at least a sliver of hope. Like, there's some goodness in her. But, uh, I mean, follow the leader and whatnot. Yeah, right. <sighs> But she it's says like, her fr- her friend needs her, which just says Diamond uh, Silver Spoon is kind of 
whipped. Yeah. That's like the passive aggressive relationship, kind of like it's almost like, you know, dominant kind of like she's she's brawl beaten by, by Diamond Tiara to be her friend. Yeah. But honestly speaking here, I mean how could you do that? Like it's not ah. oh, don't li- don't leave Prancy Drew behind that da ah, no, don't do that. You're so evil. God, I hate you. This is the part of the comic that I was like, yeah, please, give me the shotgun. Like, the, let, let's send this now. And I mean, give me the shotgun for Diamond Tian and Silver Spoon, not for Prancy Drew. I mean, come on. Good grief. Well, you know what a, you know, you know when a horse breaks their legs, it's off. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. I know, I know. Let's not, let's not, no. Dark, dark. <laughs> Come on, let me be grim dark. Oh, gosh. Grim dark. But as Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon arrive, uh, Mayor Mays obviously is like, no, you cannot win. Not all of your, uh, team members are on the steps of this, the hall. And the, the Kitty Mark Crusaders arrive, being, uh, having helped, uh, Prancy Drew up. And not all of them get up on the city hall steps, but Prancy Drew does, mm-hmm. which means that Diamond Tiara's team wins. On a because of, on a technicality, yes. But what do they win? Like, what do... They they win tickets to the Blue Hay Music Recital Concert, whatever. But because of Deus Ex Machina, of course, <laughs> it turns out that there were so many participants that they got extra tickets. So the second place winners also get tickets to the uh, Blue Hay Concert. And I'm on the other is really upset because, hey, how dare you win something we got into, we got into only to make you lose. I don't know if I call it Deus Ex Machina. They do establish there are an awful lot of teams, all of whom are absent by the end. I think they're all, maybe Diamond's Yard gave, gave them all castle clues. No, I, I think it's just the Pinkie Pie chocolate fountain or chocolate river thing that, that spooked them off. It spooked them off or they're all drowning in chocolate. Oh, oh no. There, there are worse ways to go. Uh, but Deus Ex would be someone came in and, and solved the problem for them. This one is just, Plot convenience, going for going for the happy ending, or, or Almighty Karma, having it, <laughs> having its way with two unpleasant fillies. Uh, so true. I, I think Karma's better for this than Karma. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's the it's the classic happy ending. All the 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 just are taking delight in what's in front of them. They don't care about first place as long as they all get to go to what they wanted to enjoy. And Diamond Tear and Silver Spoon are just sort of hanging on to that superiority complex. Yep, true that. I mean, the reason why Apple Bloom wanted to do this in the first place was to give a birthday present to Applejack. And that's just nice. That's just awesome of her. That is a, that is a very good reason to get into the contest. That... <laughs> so one wonders who is the real... Because this is French Forever with Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara, but you are not rooting for them at any point. You don't want them to win. You want them to get crushed or well, at least learn their lesson <laughs> yeah but at the end on the on the end speech they definitely do not learn their lesson yeah I mean, let's go to the <laughs> back page and end this because in the back page like Jen Blick's art here is really awesome and it's showing off here like this full page here with the ponies dancing and having fun it's just awesome I like it like you can see the energy in it even in Rarity who's just sort of you know, she's, she doesn't want to get with the hoedown, but she's having fun all the same. Mm-hmm. You can yeah, see. She's enjoying herself. Yeah. And Rainbow Dash with, uh, Pens- Prancy Drew. Th- that's cool. Uh, and then Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon saying they're winners, but look, at, but you look at them, you just like, you're holding on to that image because you've cut everyone else away. True. But at least Filthy is having fun. Like, look at him. He's getting into the mood. I actually like Filthy Rich. I just don't think much of him as a father. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no. Filthy Rich is not a very good dad, but he's a pretty neat guy. Like, I can well, imagine, okay. I, can, I can imagine hanging out with him and all that and him yeah. being pretty, pretty Here, Here's the thing. Filthy is an awesome guy. He does what he needs to do because of business. And the way he treats family is some sort of a business. It's transaction. And he does care for Diamond, but the problem he, is... He cares for her, but he knows when to lecture her. I mean, remember yeah. the end of the Family Appreciation Day? Yeah, yeah. That's how true. how she basically punishes Diamond Tiara for putting that business deal at risk. It's like, you don't call your main provider of business a cookie old lady. <laughs> yeah, true that. I mean, the thing is, Filthy here is an awesome guy. I mean, 
probably the people who will hang out with him or could hang out with him is people within his league. But other than that, he's a hard guy to interact with. Business people are so. But we reached the comics then, so I think it's final thoughts or likes and dislikes. Oh, really? Uh, are we already doing likes and dislikes? I don't know. I don't know if there's much else to say. There's not a lot of... There's no real new insight to that. Well, I guess I'm giving my likes and dislikes. Likes, Prancy Drew, pop culture references. The Crusaders yes. having fun and showing a, sort of a healthy outlook of it's not about winning, it's about bringing some joy to others. That's the Paragon. Now, in in books, comic and, and otherwise, the protagonist is the primary actor in a story. They're the person who's pursuing a goal. And Diamond Tiara is the protagonist in that she's pursuing a goal of sabotaging the antagonists, the Crusaders. It's not always good guys and bad guys. Uh, or rather, it's not all, the good guys are not always the protagonists. So I'll accept that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are the protagonists of this story, but, but they, I don't know anything more about their characters. I don't gain a deeper appreciation for their characters. <laughs> the, 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 they'll always be the mean ones, and that's, that's their role. I just find it hilarious how you say I don't find any new appreciation for the characters. How can you appreciate this? It's like it's it's, it's, it's a miracle has to happen where I don't know. There is no way that you can appreciate these two. They are the devil. Well, you can't appreciate goodness if there isn't a little wickedness around. To uh, you know, the crusader, the crusaders actually in this comic look so much better. This isn't even oh we're gonna get our cutie marks in scavenger hunts. No. This is, we want to do something nice for our friends and family. Hey! Mm-hmm. Your this girls is a, this are is so more, sweet. This is a more, uh, uh, selfless, uh, uh goal than just, you know, <laughs> getting their cutie marks. So yeah, they, 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 we know, we know more about the cutie mark crusaders and something new about them than about these two little blowhorns. <laughs> so that's, that's a positive for this comic. The crusaders come out looking great. Be- mm-hmm. Because the protagonists are so awful. <laughs> uh, with me, what I like about the comic is the art, the colors, the story. Yet, the thing is about Friends Forever that I always mentioned from the very beginning is about the interaction between the star characters, which is um, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon here. And they're present. But I don't root for them because they're evil. I, I do hope that... Um, Prancy Drew here would have at least changed their state of mind or at least improved their attitudes a bit. But no, they've proven to us that they will never change and they are just really, really awful characters. I think a positive that I could say about this comic is it highlights the good about the CMCs, like how they interact, how they shine in this one. Like the Diamond here and Silver Spoons here, they're like the shadow and the I'm trying to find words. To <laughs> they are the shadow, the true self. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just shadows being trying to overwhelm the light, but CMCs are much brighter. So it's good. I just like it. I wouldn't say it's my top, but I do like the story. The art's so awesome too, and pop culture reference are all over the place. And wait, is on stage? Is on stage playing gem? I'm, doesn't look like. I'm gem. on stage playing gem. No, uh, no, no, on stage. Are they gem ponies? Looks like it. I don't think Possibly. So. I One's think pink. Really, I think really pink. I, I am not versed on country country singers, but no. I'm pretty sure that they have to be a reference to a country singing group. No, no, no. It's gems, Pony. Yeah, Are you gems. sure? Are you sure? Yep. yep. I, okay. I, can't, I can't tell you. You know, I make reference to the gem comics because they make a big deal out of uh, Sunset Shimmer. I know! Sunset! Yay! Which was very weird, by the way. And I see all manner of rage over the new gem trailers. Oh, that one. Oh, what? I haven't I, seen the trailers for that. What? I know. I, I've seen the old 80s cartoon. You know, yeah. contrary, contrary to popular belief, boys watched other girls' cartoons when nothing else was on. True uh, that. I was uh, anyway, too. And, and now I'm watching a, a, a show aimed at girls <laughs> with great intent and enjoyment. But, <laughs> so true. But I just... I can't remember that show for the life of me. I'm trying I to remember do. one thing about it. The one thing that I remember about the original Gem and the Holograms is that it was so pro-feminist 
that it made some parts of Tumblr look moderate in comparison. Okay, here's the thing. Like from what I remember about Gem, like the tidbits I can remember is about this one girl. She's a normal girl. She discovers a technology in her father's basement or in her father's um, orphanage. She owns an orphanage and she takes care of, of orphan kids. So yay! Oh and God, we are so bound. <laughs> I know. The and guy who directed the Gem and the Holograms movie also did the sequel to G.I. Joe mm-hmm. and two documentaries for Justin Bieber. Oh, but anyway, um, <laughs> with, with the, with the original Gem, she found a device and that device can create a solid hologram of her. Like she can have wavy hairs, whatever she, she just basically whatever she wants. And there's a lead character who, likes the orphan girl but doesn't like gem so that's something cool like ah uh, i'm really showing my no way uh could we just skip this i didn't even give my final thoughts on the comic you just said no no about uh, no the i just I, I just want to skip that like, like let's just skip, let's skip that <laughs> let's let's go on thoughts about this comic uh, <laughs> so may i give my final thoughts on that on this? yes please um uh, <laughs> Definitely not one of my favorites when it comes to the to the Friends Forever. Um, hell, I wouldn't even consider it one of my favorites when it comes to the, all the comics overall. Is that I don't regret reading it. I am glad they took this different perspective, and Jen Blake Jen Blake's artwork is really cool. Like uh, her art style is really neat, and I hope to see more of her in the in the future. Um. That sounded wrong. Uh, I like to see that Diamond Tear and Silver Spoon have a bit more of the spotlight, but they definitely don't come off as uh, either likable or interesting characters because you can make you can make someone hateable and still make them interesting. No, they're just they are just evil, evil for evil's sake. <sighs> that can only take you that for, so far. So sorry to say, but this one just falls on the middle of the road for me. Uh, the artwork saves it. The artwork and some of the character moments, and Prancy Drew, who's absolutely adorable, save this comic from getting the uh, guillotine treatment and just take it to the glue factory. Mm-hmm. That's that's one of the reasons why I don't find this comic so uh, mediocre. True that, true that. But overall, I, I think have we hated on uh, Friends Forever before? Uh well, we were very. Very negative about the first issue of Friends Forever. Mm, yeah. Although we did figure out that it's a lot better than the than the Wild West arc or the Everfree Forest attacking arc. Mm. We agree that, that 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 comic was better than those two. Uh, we were a bit uh, a bit critic critic. Uh, we were, we had a lot of criticism for the Sekora and Fluttershy one. Mm-hmm. Uh, same goes with the with the uh, Iron Wheel and Fluttershy one. Yeah. That one as well. Mm. And the Princess Luna and Spike, uh, Friends Forever 2 as well. Mm. But overall, I, I think this one is not bad. Because, no, this, yeah. this one keeps going on a trend that there is no zero out of five, zero out of ten complete garbage Friends Forever comic. Mm. Is that there are comics that have good things, are, uh, comics that are okay, and comics that are excellent. Uh, at mm-hmm. least from what I'm standing. Yeah, same here, same here. Because I'm trying to think about it and try to think hard. Did we have a very meh moment? And with this one, like Diamond Terra Silver Spoon, I wouldn't say meh. I was very entertained by some of the panels and some of the comics here. Like some good. Yeah, I, I won't say this is a lost cause. It's just one I'm not really eager to reread. Mm-hmm. Or if I do, I'll just look at the panels that have the stuff I like. I true that. I fall on the same on the same uh, on the same page. Then I wouldn't reread it, but I don't th- I don't regret reading it. Oh, yeah, true that, true that. But anyway, James, next week's wow. review. What are you going to do? So next week we are going to be reviewing episode thirteen of season five, overall episode number one hundred and four, written by Scott Sonborn with story by Jason Thiessen and Jim Miller, titled "The Princess's Dream of Magic Ship." And boy, 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 that is going to be one hell of a story for another time. Mm-hmm. Until then, yes. thank you guys so much for watching this review. Uh, thank you guys for uh, coming here. Like, really, I cannot appreciate the both of you uh, enough for doing these episode reviews and these comic reviews. 
Like I remember all the way back the, back when when I when we started in like 2013 was it Norman? Probably yeah. We started was like start the, season four. almost two years ago, and now we are keep doing this uh, like uh, at such a good pace. I'm just this is a privilege, and I don't say it often enough. So thank you to the both of you for uh for for coming on and doing this. You guys are great. No problem, man. Thank you. <laughs> So we will see you on the next NBA show reviews. Have a good one, everybody. Goodbye. Good night, y'all. Have a ah, ah curses. <laughs> ha, have a working sound box. <laughs> Adi- adios. Uh, you want to do that again, Silva? <laughs> uh, let's, well, let's see if this darn thing works. Ooh, what the hell's that? Uh, that's what? a telephone sound effect. Huh. Oh, okay. It seems oh. I I guess the batteries are dying. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've u- I've used it so much that I'm wearing out the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> can you get the batteries for it? Yeah, <laughs> indeed I can. You're not going to get away that easy. Oh good. good. No, I am actually happy. I cannot imagine you now with all your sound box. Um. That's my sound box. Well, let's see here. What can I do for a farewell music? <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, so I'll just... Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Adios. <laughs> oh, that's new. <laughs> ah, and the survey says... Bye.